So, the, right, first of all, um, VMS, um, like its RSX forerunners, has a couple of layers to the file system. Um, the purpose of a file system is to turn a raw disk, which is just a collection of numbered disk blocks, into something that people can use. So, thing, you know, structures with directories with names and files with names and so on, and the ability to create, delete, <coughs> reallocate, um, you know, extend files. <coughs> um, and so the bottom layer of the file system um, is that piece of logic that handles files and it turns, it turns the disk blocks into named files. Um, and in VMS, um, its interface is again block access. So a file is just, it's a container with a name, um, and then in it you have a collection of blocks. Um, that's very comparable to Unix and Windows, um, only Unix and Windows um, treat a file as just a stream of bytes. Um, so there's a minor difference in VMS at this level. You, you talk about accessing individual blocks. Um, in Unix and Windows, you access streams of bytes. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the same kind of structure. Um, VMS went a different route, um, and we layered another package on top of that. It's called RMS, which stands for Record Management System. And RMS provides um, access to files um, in terms of record logical records, where a record is a, la a logical data unit. In, in simplest sense, in a text file, for example, a record might be a line of text. Um, RMS uh, supports several different file formats. Um, you have sequential files. Um, there are also direct access files that you can access by record number, um, and then it has indexed files, which are a simple form of database. Um, indexed files, again, have records, and then they can be organized by fields within the records that are defined as keys. So, for example, an employee number or a name uh, or anything else that you want, and um, indexed files can have multiple keys. Um, and it's a fairly powerful system. A lot of, a lot of applications have been built on that. Um, and that's all bundled into the VMS file system. RMS also provides the device independent access um, so that you can access files on disk, you can access files on um, ANSI magnetic tape, uh, you can access sequential devices like terminals, and it's all done with the same set of RMS services. Um, so, for a simple application point of view, the application doesn't care what it's actually talking to. Um, and another advantage of having this centralized is that it's much easier for ap applications to talk to each other. If one application writes an indexed file, for example, another application can just open that file and again access the logical records and not have to worry about the details of how that file is structured because RMS has taken care of that and everyone is using the same package. Um, <clears throat> so these are, I mean, there, there are comparable packages um, available in Unix and Windows, but they're separate from the base file system. Um, so in, in VMS, it's all, it's all part of the same thing. Um, the on-disk structure, the, the file structure, which is uh, the mechanism that carves the disk into files and directories, has gone through a series of evolutions. Um, the so-called ODS-1, on-disk structure 1, was developed for um, the RSX-11 family of operating systems um, running on the PDP-11s. Um, and so it has its roots in right around 1970, um, which is where I came um, to this picture in my talk uh, on why we need a new file system. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a piece of clip art of a couple of hippies with beads and bell bottoms, uh, and it's titled, The File System is Older Than, uh, older than You Think. 
Um, and right, in fact, you know, in 1970, people were wa actually walking around looking like that. Um, and um, so that served the PDP-11 world fairly well. And then for VMS, um, we developed ODS-2, on-disk structure level version 2, which was um, a fairly modest evolution of ODS-1. Um, it changed the directory format so that um, file names could be longer. The, um, the ODS-1 format had just fixed fields for directory, so um, you had a nine-character file name plus a three-character extension, very comparable to what you had in, like, Windows 3. Um, and, um, let's see, yeah, right, ODS-2 added um, directories with names and multiple levels of directories, and it added volume sets. Um, Right. ODS-1 supported only single volumes. In ODS-2, you could take multiple volumes, bind them into a volume set, and have a single logical structure um, that, you know, that, that, that you could access as a collection of files. Um, at this point, that concept is pretty much obsolete because since then, um, we've seen the evolution of logical volume managers um, and virtualizing storage controllers. The new file system is not going to support volume sets. They're not necessary anymore. Um, and in fact, they, just, they would just add needless complication to the file system. Um, we added a few other little things in ODS2, like disk quotas, so we could track the usage um, of space by individual users. Um, and then there were some other internal details that were rearranged that um, allowed us to better address the larger disks that were starting to come along. Um, ODS-5 mainly extended the set of characters that you, that you could put in file names and it allowed file names to become even longer. Um, and the reason that we even had to change the structure level, um, right, and the disks are marked differently. If you were to take an ODS-5 disk back to an older version of VMS and try to mount it, it would say, I'm sorry, I can't recognize that file structure. Um, and the primary driver for that was the way directories are ordered. Um, this was another feature that we added in ODS-2, which was to, to just alphabetically order uh, all of the entries in a directory, which allows an optimized search. Um, and in ODS-5, we added upper and lowercase file names, as long as most of the special characters. And the file system, of course, has always been case blind, like Windows, unlike Unix. Um, and so, um, we wanted to keep the files in alphabetical order, um, case blind. And so that, that's a different uh, sorting algorithm than what ODS-2 used. And that was the, the, the first reason that we had to bump the file structure level. Um, then we took advantage of that to do a few other internal rearrangements to just make, ourselves, make life easier for us. Um, and that's, that's really pretty much it. I can't write off, think of any, you know, anything else important. That was, well, that was part of the first ODS-5 project. Um, since then, the other thing that we've added is special files and symbolic links. Uh, symbolic links first shipped in VMS 8.4, so that's a very recent feature. Um, not a whole lot of people are using those yet. Um, and they work exactly the same way uh, as symbolic links work in Unix. Okay, oh yes, what, okay, what happened to ODS-3 and ODS-4? Um, and, right, ultimately though, right, those numbers are not particularly meaningful. Um, they're, right, they're, they're just internal codes for, for the different file formats. And um, ODS-3, is um, ISO 9660 CD-ROM, ODS-4 is High Sierra CD-ROM. 
um, though, you know, those are the industry standards for, you know, for portable CD-ROM format. And I think I've got those numbers correct. Um, it might be the other way around. Um, and the only reason that there's two of them is that High Sierra is the CD-ROM format that was um, developed first by, you know, by, by a committee of architects. And then somehow the standards political process um, resulted in a collection of incompatible changes such that what finally came out of the ISO committee was different from what the High Sierra Committee had designed. And so we have both formats instead.